Greetings, Law Seekers, and welcome back to another episode of the Lost Archives. That's right, more Star Wars Legends Law. And today, well, today we are talking about a different type of super weapon. One used in massive destructive capabilities, but also boring design concepts from a lot of the other ones. I am talking about the Galaxy Gun, or ga Galaxy Weapon, as it was also known. A rather phallic looking piece of equipment that had the power to fire projectiles. Armoured projectiles that had a lot of weapons that could even shrug off damage from some of the most powerful warships in the Alliance slash New Republic fleet, and yet still destroy its target. It was able to do this by firing a projectile through hyperspace that had a particle disintegrator warhead attached to the device. But this particular weapon was a bit different from many other Imperial super weapons, not just in the fact that it was a completely different design concept. The difference is as well is that it wasn't Bevel Lemelisk's creation. This was Umak Lef's creation, one of the engineers who worked with Bevel Lemelisk on the original Death Star project. And he was commanded by a certain reborn emperor to um, design him a weapon that could make his enemies pay. Now the reborn Palpatine of that era did have other weapons that could be used as world devastators in his arsenal though I will cover that in its own separate video there. Those of you who are a connoisseur of the EU material will have recognised what I've just um, referenced there as well, and probably face palming because of how blatant it was. But anyway, moving back to the Galaxy Gun. So the gun itself was uh, around 7,250 metres in diameter. This is the length of a essentially long torpedo tube and it would fire a large destructive pro yeah, English cell. A large destructive projectile weapon equipped with a particle disintegrator warhead. And basically what would happen is it would fire this projectile through hyperspace and this could generally travel about the same speed as most advanced hyperspace equipped ships and could travel that distance quite quickly. And then upon exiting hyperspace, it would go for straight for its target, ignoring any ships it had come by, while also activating point defense laser defenses to stop them from, you know, trying to blast it out the sky. And its powerful energy shields would then be able to deflect even the most powerful shots from turbo lasers and even iron cannons. Once this torpedo had reached its target it would start to trigger immense nuclear cloud reactions that would encircle the target world surface and within minutes the projectile would reach full power and at this full power setting the nuclear reactions it would produce would essentially reduce all matter on the planet into energy so every microbe every plant every city every human being would be gone leaving behind a planet pristine and ready for abuse by the Imperial War Machine. And considering some of the other tools in Palpatine's arsenal, he had just the thing ready to abuse those planets. Now the Galaxy Gun could be set at lower energy settings for these torpedoes, meaning it could target cities or even individuals and military bases, leaving most of it ready for use and basically just destroying strategic targets. Bit of a waste for a world devastating weapon if you ask me, but it is more, whether this Death Star was more the hammer, this could be more a scalpel. Now, the Galaxy Gun was still using the similar tactics as drawn up within the Tarkin Doctrine, basically the policy of fear. And it would be this fear that would keep all the systems in line. Granted, in the case of this particular weapon, it was being used as an example to bring the New Republic slash... Once again being referred to as the Rebel Alliance in these comics at this point. Seemingly overnight. Mm. This was used to prove a point that if you go against the Empire, they are going to 
come after you. And what's the planet to them? There's hundreds more out in the galaxy. These key shows of power by the Galactic Empire allowed them to reclaim a lot of their territory in the inner and outer rims, nearly crippling the New Republic at this time. <laughs> However, the over-reliance on this weapon did eventually lead to the downfall of the resurgent Galactic Empire. And the weapon was eventually destroyed by having R2-D2 crash another one of Palpatine's super weapons right into it. I suppose there's some poetic justice in that. I shall build a lot of super weapons. What? What's this? A droid is crashing one of them into it. Oh dear. Now, in its final death throes, the galaxy gun actually caused an even bigger headache for Palpatine. Namely that, it released one final torpedo as it was being destroyed. Not being fired through hyperspace, however, it was picked up by the gravitational pull of the planet it was orbiting. The planet of Biss. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can work out what happened after this. Now, let's just say that torpedo completely obliterated Biss out of existence, which, considering this was Palpatine's secret throne world, that was a bit of a hindrance to his plans. Now, at the time of the Second Galactic Civil War slash the Imperial Civil War, the Galaxy Gun was one of the most powerful weapons at the Emperor's disposal. However, it's one he should have used sparingly and perhaps kept in reserve for later on. Using it like he did put a target on its back. A much bigger target than any evil weapon he created but then this was mostly because it could fire through hyperspace. A concept that I do think may have been settled upon or even reverse engineered from the studying of Centerpoint Station, which itself was... In, you know what, I'm actually going to go into its own video for Centerpoint Station. But pro pro probably could go into several on that particular subject on its own, as it's not just a super weapon, but... Um, many other things as well. Anyway, I'm going to stop ranting about that. But going forward into more of the EU canon is that Luke would actually almost come to regret the destruction of this weapon as he realised it could have helped quite greatly in a future war and it could have been used to destroy certain uh, world-sized ships of um, an enemy that the galaxy was not really ready for. But well, anyway, before I start going off on a tangent on another bit of lore, I'll bring the episode to a close there. If you have any comments, please pop them down below. Maybe get your thoughts on the lore, this video, or perhaps any ways I could improve, as well as hitting the subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and perhaps consider leaving a like or sharing this video around. That being said, take care, have a good day, and may the lore keepers ever be in your favour.